This is my first time attending the EP2LDS, and I'm so far very impressed uh, by the organization and by the program. So today, I'd like to talk to you about the completion of the Quantum Core Trio. So this year, uh, 2013, is a special, I think, will become a historical year that we completed uh, the entire table of the Hall effects, starting from the Hall to Spin Hall to Anonymous Hall, and then to the quantum version of the quantum core, quantum spin core, and the quantum anonymous hall. So uh, the quantum core effect, uh, well, so first of all, the Hall effect uh, was uh, discovered by Hall. Uh, in the case you, when you have a strong, uh, you, when you have an external magnetic field which breaks time reversal uh, symmetry, and the orbital magnetic field gives rise to a Lorentz force. And the classical Hall effect, of course, is the phenomena that as you pass a current, uh, you have a, a transverse uh, voltage. Actually, Hall himself also discovered the anonymous Hall effect. In this case, rather than having an external magnetic field, you have magnetic moments, and you do not need the external magnetic field. So these will be ferromagnetic materials, uh, which uh, have some spontaneous formation of the ferromagnetic moments below certain Curie temperature. The system would also have spin-orbit coupling. So the combination of the time reversal symmetry breaking due to the ferromagnetic moments and to the spin-orbit coupling leads to the so-called anonymous core effect that as you pass a current, uh, you also can get a transverse uh, voltage. Uh, so in here, uh, the orbital magnetic field uh, is not important. There's no Lorentz force, but there's a spin-orbit coupling and to spontaneous magnetic moments. So still today, uh, there are some debate about uh, what's the fundamental mechanism for anonymous Hall effect, whether it's intrinsic or extrinsic, uh, but uh, I will show you that uh, with the discovery of the quantum anonymous Hall effect, uh, certainly we believe in this case, uh, the, uh, uh, the intrinsic effect uh, is uh, important. So now, uh, quite uh, many, many years afterwards, almost 100 years later, uh, uh, we talked about uh, the theory of intrinsic spin hole effect as earlier prediction about extrinsic spin hole effect. In this case, you have materials which are strong spin orbit coupled system, but there's no external magnetic field and there's no spontaneous ferromagnetic moments. So in this case, there is a time reversal symmetry in the system. So if you have time reversal symmetry, then you are by symmetry not allowed to have a whole voltage. So as you pass a current, uh, you cannot accumulate a whole voltage just by the symmetry of the time reversal uh, symmetry. But you can acquire a spin accumulation on both sides. So in some sense, you can acquire spin voltage. And this is the phenomena of the uh, spin hole effect. So now after Klaus von Klitzing's uh, great discovery that we now know at least uh, at that time, that the whole effect has a quantum version, and this is the famous trace of the quantum whole effect uh, as a function of the magnetic field. And here, again, the Landau levels uh, play a very important role uh, in the case of integer quantum whole effect. These integers also correspond to the filling factor uh, at which uh, the number of Landau levels are uh, filled. So now, uh, in 206, and that's the history I will review a little bit uh, for you, we theoretically predicted that uh, out of the spin hole effect, and especially the intrinsic spin hole effect, there should be a quantum spin hole effect. And that later started the uh, great uh, uh, series of discoveries of the topological insulator. In some sense, a uh, quantum spin hole effect is synonymous uh, to two dimensional topological insulator. So in this case, uh, you have, uh, uh, again, a system with time reversal symmetry, but strong spin orbit coupled system, uh, and it's not a surprise that the, the first realization of the topo 2D topological insulator of quantum spin hole effect occurs in mercury terrorite, mercury being a strong uh, heavy element, have very strong spin orbit coupling. So in this case, the system is insulating in the bulk, uh, similar to here, but there are edge states. And the fundamental difference is that here, the edge states are all going in one direction, or at least in the simple versions of the quantum core effect. Here, the quantum spin hole effect, the edge states are counter-propagating, and basically they're related to the spin. So for example, you can have uh, the up spin going around in a counterclockwise fashion and down spin going in a clockwise fashion. And that was uh, experimentally observed one year after the theoretical prediction uh, by Lawrence Mollenkamp's group in uh, University of Pittsburgh.
So now, for quite a while, uh, this was the history in 2007, uh, the community started to thinking about, well, if there are three Hall effects, and uh, two of them already, uh, they, we have uh, observed the quantum version of it, what about the last possible member, which is the quantum anonymous Hall effect? And that's the discovery that has been announced just this year about the quantum anonymous Hall effect. And that was, again, theoretically predicted by our group that uh, you can consider a uh, topological insulator, which is a bismuth terrorite, but you dope uh, bismuth terrorite material, which by itself uh, is a strong spin orbit coupled system, which realizes three dimensional topological insulator, but by itself is not magnetic. But if you introduce magnetic dopants from the 3D elements, such as chromium or iron, in this particular case, it was chromium, then uh, you, uh, you realize the basic requirements of the anonymous Hall effect. You have strong spin orbit coupling, and you, have ferro you could possibly form ferromagnetic moments. So one of the uh, theoretical calculations we did uh, in 2010, uh, published in a science paper, is to try to predict uh, the magnetic order of this material. And uh, we predicted that indeed it uh, has some Curie temperature about something like 20 degree Kelvin with magnetic moments pointing out of the plane. And just this year, uh, a group uh, in Tsinghua University led by Qi Kun Shui uh, observed, uh, as we predicted theoretically, that in the magnetic hysteresis loop, you see that uh, uh, at zero magnetic field, you can have a plateau, uh, which is, uh, corresponds to a quantum, uh, corresponds to a, a new uh, a one uh, integer of the whole effect. And uh, part of my talk will address uh, issues how you go to higher plateaus. So in this case, even though there are some, um, of course, uh, with any magnetic moments, uh, there are magnetic fields, but the, uh, this is a two-dimensional system. The magnetic field generated by these magnetic moments are totally insignificant. The system does not have any lambda level and it's purely due to the combination of spin orbit coupling with magnetic moments or the exchange interaction. And there's no orbital row of the magnetic field. So now let me start uh, with the uh, development of the two-dimensional topological insulator. This is a chart that uh, semiconductor physicists or uh, optoelectrical engineers see uh, very often of binary semiconductors uh, in the space of energy gap and lattice constant which are, of course, uh, very uh, important uh, if you want to pick a material for some uh, optoelectronic uh, application of certain wavelengths. So, of course, the lattice constant is also very important because it tells you, looking vertically, how you construct uh, possible heterojunctions. So, as we were thinking about this uh, phenomena of quantum spin Hall effect and try to think about which material could possibly give rise to this uh, wonderful phenomena, we suddenly stumbled upon a very peculiar feature of this chart, namely almost all the binary semiconductors have a positive gap. Uh, most people take for granted that the energy gap of a semiconductor, you always think of it as a positive number. But in this very clever way of plotting, uh, that there is actually a material, mercury terrorite, which has a negative energy gap. And that was the moment, uh, or eureka moment, where we realized uh, that uh, the spin orbit coupling can drive what a phenomena which is called bending version, and it's this bending version which is a, now has become, uh, since then, uh, important, the most important design rule for discovering uh, topological uh, insulators. So uh, in condensed matter physics, almost all, uh, most majority of the phenomena are uh, experimentally uh, discovered first. But in the case of topological insulator, because we could formulate such a design rule, almost all topological insulators were theoretically predicted before their experimental realization. And Mercury Territe, this uh, nice plot, uh, was the very first hint that guided us in the right uh, direction. So now let me tell you just a little bit about the theory. So these are all uh, semiconductors of SP band. So the important energy levels, because we're on the right-hand side of the periodic <coughs> table, the important orbitals are the S orbitals and the P orbitals. So if you want to construct a simple model of this material, you can construct the S orbitals. Of course, you can have two states, spin up, spin down. 
and uh, you can have also p orbitals. Now, there are many p orbitals. Which ones do you take? You take the strongest because of the strong spin orbit coupling uh, in this material. You take those which have strongest spin orbit coupling. So for spin up, you take px plus ipy. And for spin down, you take the px minus ipy. So in the semiconductor jargon terminology, these are called exactly the heavy hole states of the uh, semiconductors, which you also have in gallium arsenide. So now if you look at a, a tight binding uh, kind of model for these uh, uh, relevant orbitals uh, closest to the Fermi level, uh, you can further block diagonalize this 4 by 4 Hamiltonian matrix into 2 by 2 blocks. Uh, in fact, this uh, block diagonalization will be pretty accurate because uh, mercury telluride, even though it's a zinc blend structure, the breaking of the inversion symmetry is not so important. If you break inversion, or oh, in, indeed it does break inversion slightly, and the slight breaking of the inversion symmetry uh, will give rise to some off block of diagonal matrix element. But for the moment, the important physics we can concentrate on uh, is in the block diagonal form. So you look at S orbital and P orbital uh, for spin up uh, in the upper block, and its time reverse partner in the spin down uh, blocks. So now, in the diagonal element, uh, the k equals to zero component will tell you about the energy level difference between S and P orbital. And then in the uh, momentum dependent part, we'll be describing the band dispersion of the S band and the band dispersion of the heavy hole band. These are quite standard things. But now, you, when you look at the off diagonal matrix element, interesting structures start to occur. Because S orbital and P orbital have different parity, we know that at k equals to 0 at precisely the gamma point, because of the parity difference, the matrix element has to be identically 0. So when you tailor expand to the next order, you will get a linear order in k. And the structure is basically determined by, the, by this uh, combination of k, p, x plus i. Py, which translates into kx plus iky. So this is a very, very beautiful structure. This is the emergence of the Dirac equation in condensed matter physics. By now, you're already quite familiar with the fact that in graphene, uh, we, the low energy physics of graphene is described by a Dirac Hamiltonian. But in that case, it was due to the special feature of the honeycomb lattice structure. It's not so general or not so generic. But in semiconductor physics, especially when you have narrow gap semiconductor uh, situation, the uh, uh, parity difference between S and P automatically uh, ensures you that the linear matrix element arises in the R of diagonal component. So this is exactly the 2 plus 1 dimensional Dirac equation. But unlike in the case of graphene, where the mass of the Dirac particle is exactly at 0, uh, or pretty close to zero. Uh, here, we have the wonderful possibility of tuning the mass gap, basically by tuning the level difference between S and P, which you can tune by the thickness of mercury telluride layer sandwiched uh, in between canyon telluride. But furthermore, you can not only change or tune the magnitude of the gap, you can also tune or change the uh, sign of the gap. Because uh, mercury telluride being a negative energy uh, band gap material, cadmium telluride being a positive energy uh, uh, um, gap material, as you tune the relative thickness of mercury versus cadmium, you can tune the level difference between S and P. And that is a wonderful, wonderful tuning up we have. We can induce a topological phase transition. And this is pointed out by my former students, uh, Andre Bernovic, Taylor Hughes, and myself in the science paper in uh, 2006. Now, if you tune into the regime where the bands are inverted, the two-dimensional bands are inverted, you have mass uh, less than zero. So then in this case, the sample boundary looks like a domain wall of the Dirac mass. Outside, you can take the Dirac mass to be positive, and inside, in the band inverted regime, which is the case when the mercury terrier layer is greater than 6.2 nanometer in thickness. That's also something we can predict very accurately, theoretically. So then, the sample boundary looks like a domain wall. So it traps some bound state at the domain wall. So, it tra so we can, uh, along this x direction, have a periodic boundary condition. So kx becomes a good quantum number. When you take kx equals to 0, you will to have two states, because there are two block diagonal Dirac equations, one in the uh, spin up block, one for the spin down block. You have the red and the, the blue. So then, uh, you, as you change momentum kx, then these energy levels will start to change. 
and that sweeps out the dispersion relation. So at the sample boundary, so you start with a massive two plus one dimensional Dirac equation with a negative gap, but then you find that the sample boundary will have this uh, bound state, one for each, uh, one pair for each momentum kx, and as you change kx, therefore it sweeps out uh, dispersion. So you have one dimensional massless Dirac equation at the boundary uh, for a uh, Dirac model which has a uh, negative uh, mass gap. And so that point is a point of degeneracy uh, which is uh, guaranteed by the Kramer's theorem. So now if the, these states are moving along the edge, they cannot backscatter because if they have a non-magnetic impurity, there will be two possible ways of backscattering. And in each case, if you try to backscatter, the spin also have to rotate adiabatically in one case by pi and in the other case by minus pi. So the net difference between pi and minus pi is two pi. And we remember that in quantum mechanics, as you rotate spin one half particle by two pi, you get a minus sign. It's exactly this minus sign which leads to a destructive, totally destructive interference for backscattering. In other words, quantum mechanics says that it is forbidden to backscatter by a non-magnetic impurity. So this uh, uh, got us very excited. Our science paper was published very early, uh, very soon, accepted, and so we predict that if the thickness is less than 6.5 nanometer, it's an ordinary insulator. So as you tune the gate voltage, you get into a, a, a gap region where the conductance is almost zero or the resistance is almost infinity. But if you construct a mercury terrorite layer sandwiched in between canyon terrorite, uh, where the uh, layer is uh, greater than 6.5, in this case 7 nanometer, and this is the experimental uh, data from uh, Molenkamp's group, that in this case will predict there will be edge state which connects the conduction and the valence band. And as you tune the chemical potential into the region where the bulk band gap is, uh, you still intersect this uh, uh, helical edge state and that gives you a, a conductance quantization of 2 e squared over h. So now that was only for quite a while, that was the only transport measurement. So now uh, I have uh, initiated uh, a DAPA project uh, which led to extensive collaboration between Würzburg and Stanford, and uh, Stanford group experimentalists have specialized in nanoprobes in picking up this, uh, the direct real space imaging of these uh, edge currents. So this is an experiment done by Cam Mollis group at Stanford. And as you go from uh, the uh, bulk P and N type region into the insulated regime, you can use a squid uh, to, this is the shape of a squid, to uh, sense the magnetic field generated by the current. And you can look at the current distribution. And you see, if you're at the blue point, you see the current, so this is the magnetic field profile, and when you invert, you get the uh, current density. And in, in the case, uh, you, you see that when the, you're in the bulk carrier region, the current is flowing everywhere, and when you go into the insulating regime, uh, the current is basically concentrated on the edge. So this is a direct real space imaging, uh, proving beyond any reasonable doubt that uh, we have a, a system uh, of topological insulated behavior where current is carried on the edge. So now this is the experiment done by Zach Shen's group. And so here you take a squid which measures the magnetic field. So Zach Shen's group has a local uh, microwave tip and that measures the local conductivity under the tip. So whether you have a metallic region or insulating region, uh, the microwave, of course, can tell you very easily, as we have the experience as we uh, should not put any knives and forks into a metallic object into a microwave oven. So they give rise to very dra drastic uh, uh, differences. So as you go into, again, in the bulk in, uh, carrier region, N and P, versus the bulk uh, insulating region, you see that these traces, the white region, uh, tells you whether local conductivity is high. So this is in the uh, zero gap, which corresponds to gap insulating regime. You see the bulk is indeed insulating, and you have edges which are conductive. But as you tune into this 200 milli uh, volts region, uh, gate, gate voltage, you see actually the conductance is everywhere. So this again gives you a vivid real space picture uh, of uh, the quantum spin hole edge state uh, picture. So now, uh, for quite a while, this uh, mercury terrorite was the only sample uh, which can give rise to this uh, two-dimensional quantum spin hole effect. Uh, and you may wonder, where is this field going? 
So I predict that uh, one of the major developments in the next few years in this 2D field uh, will be a convergence into the middle, going from 2.6 material to 3.5 uh, material and to group 4 material. And that's what I'd like to tell you about now. So now in the case of Indian arsenide, gallium, and antimonite, we theoretically predicted in 2008 that each material is topologically trivial. But the uh, hydrojunction made by these two materials actually becomes topologically non-trivial because there's a relative bending version in this system. Namely, when you put these two materials together, the bottom of the conduction band of Indian arsenide sinks below the top of the valence band of gallium antimonide. So therefore, these two parabolas, one due to the conduction band, the other due to the valence band, would intersect. At a point when they intersect, when you turn on some uh, hopping, uh, at the interface between these two materials, that will open up a gap. So this system, even though it looks naively like metallic, actually is semiconducting. And if you put the Fermi level here, uh, the system is actually insulating uh, with uh, quite a small gap, about 10 milli electron volt, or even possibly smaller. So now that, even though this is due to relative band inversion, whereas mercury terrorite is intrinsic band inversion, the physics is almost identically the same, and we predict that this material will have a topological 2D quantum spin hole effect. And very recently, this was a theoretical prediction in 2008, but very recently in this year, Ray Ray Dose group have achieved reaching the topological insulating limit, and these are the devices that he has fabricated, and these are the uh, function conductance as a function of the gate voltage. Very similar to the Würzburg experiment, but now you he really sees conductance quantization exactly what uh, theory of uh, two-dimensional quantum spin hole effect will predict uh, uh, in this, for this material. So now, uh, now still there's a disadvantage. Both, uh, so even uh, mercury terrorite, you will say, has a relatively small gap, but also it's a material uh, which is a little bit hard to handle. Only Würzburg group can do that. In the arsenide, gallium antimonide opens up the space much uh, wider, and many more groups can do it, but the gap is still relatively small, about 10 milli electron volt. If we really want to think about applications uh, for the quantum spin hole effect or for the uh, topological insulator, we would like to have a 2D topological insulator with a relative large energy gap. And that's what we predict now. This is a preprint uh, about a few weeks ago where we predict that if you have a two-dimensional version of tin, at the time we wrote the paper, we didn't even know what, how to call it. Uh, our Latin is not good enough. But now I've, we figured it out. It should be called stannin. Uh, stannin uh, is the chemical symbol uh, where, where the chemical symbol of SN comes from. That's the Latin root. Stannin will be a two-dimensional honeycomb lattice made out of a single layer of tin atoms, they form a honeycomb lattice, and to structurally we can compute them, it's stable, but there's a buckling of uh, uh, SN going up and down uh, because the honeycomb lattice is, is bipartite, so there's a unique buckling structure. But furthermore, you can terminate them uh, just like graphene has a graphene version, stannin will have a stannin version, uh, that you will have uh, a hydrogen termination uh, similar to graphene, or you can have fluoro stannin uh, with uh, fluorine, chlorine, and so on. And we computed that uh, pure stannin will have a quite, still quite a small gap, but if you fluorine terminate or beryllium terminate them, it will be a two-dimensional topological insulator with a very large gap of 300 milli electron volt. So that will be a very nice direction for those who love graphene and topological insulator to search for these uh, materials. Now you can say, well, this is only a theory, but so far we have been doing pretty well with theoretical predictions. So I hope that gives you some motivation to try. So we computed uh, the uh, band structure and indeed find this beautiful helical edge state. So now let me uh, very briefly touch upon the three-dimensional topological insulator. After the discovery of mercury terrorite, we now know where to look for, uh, for a topological insulator in the lower right corner of the periodic table. And obviously, you see bismuth tellurium, bismuth selenium, and uh, this kind of uh, material. So these are quintuple layered material forming this uh, uh, layered structure similar to graphene, except that the basic unit is a quintuple layer rather than a single layer. So now, here the relevant orbitals are the p orbitals of bismuth and selenium. But because this quintuple layer has a center of inversion 
to the middle layer, you can form bonding anti-bonding states which have the opposite parity. So now these PZ orbitals bonding from bismuth anti-bonding from selenium under the influence of spin orbit coupling will have a bending version. And this is the basis from which we predicted theoretically a group of uh, three-dimensional topological insulating antimony terrorite, bismuth terrorite, and bismuth selenium. And we actually was also able to predict that antimony selenium does not have enough spin orbit coupling to go through the bending version and is topologically trivial. So for example, a very attractive material today uh, is that uh, bismuth selenium has a band gap of 0.3 eV, but they have a Dirac cone like structure on its surface. And the reason it has, it's very similar, just generalize uh, the model uh, that I constructed through, uh, with Bernovic and Hughes, but generalize now these to, to the three dimensional version. So this is really the textbook three plus one dimensional Dirac equation. And again, at the diagonal element, you have the mass gap and that you can tune uh, by spin orbit coupling uh, by going through different material. And when it's negative, it will trap a topological surface state. So this topological surface state is distinct from graphene in the sense that it's, there's only one Dirac uh, cone on the surface, whereas graphene has four KK prime valley degeneracy and spin up, spin down degeneracy. Here, there's not even a, uh, that the valley is only at a gamma point, but even for the spin, uh, for a given momentum, there's only a single spin. It forms a left-handed <coughs> helix for the upper Dirac cone and a right-handed spin helix for the lower Dirac cone. So now, uh, and this, was, uh, this is now the most active uh, research in the three-dimensional topological insulator, and a lot of progress has been made. So now let me move down to the recent excitement of the quantum anonymous Hall effect. So this is the case, just generalizing what is the anonymous Hall effect. These are materials which are ferromagnetic and have large spin orbit coupling. Now the question is whether you can go to a quantum limit. So we formulated a general theory of the uh, quantum anonymous Hall effect in 206, which I will describe. But first, uh, I will explain that Duncan Hordain also has a model in 1988 where he constructed a honeycomb lattice with circulating current loops, uh, which give rise to a quantum uh, Hall effect without the external magnetic field. But I will not call this model a uh, quantum anonymous Hall effect model because it's a spinless model with circulating current does not have the essential ingredient of the anonymous Hall effect, which requires a ferromagnetic spin and spin orbit coupling. So in all general theory, we constructed a simplest possible model of quantum anonymous Hall effect, which is a two by two matrix model. So if you want to consider spin, you at least have to have a two by two matrix because you can have spin up and spin down. So any two by two matrix can be naturally expanded in the basis of Pauli matrices because the Hamiltonian has to be Hamitian and the complete set of Hamitian two by two matrix is spanned by the Pauli matrices. So therefore, the coefficient before the Pauli matrices, you can have three of them and they can be generally momentum uh, dependent. So this I call the three vector D as a function of momentum K. When you compute all of this, so there's no external magnetic field whatsoever, there's no lambda level. But yet when you compute what is the whole response of this system, you immediately arrive at the following formula. And that following formula has a beautiful topological interpretation. We're living in two dimensions, so therefore the momentum K lives on a two-dimensional Brillouin zone, which has the topology of a torus, because they're periodically identified. Now there are three D vectors, and you can always normalize its norm. So there are three vectors that norm is equal to one, and that therefore lives on the surface of a sphere. So these D vectors are describing a mapping from the two-dimensional Brillouin zone torus to the surface of a sphere. And that, topolo that mapping is described by a winding number, and it turns out this winding number is exactly equals to the whole conductance of the system. So that's why this is quantized. This quantization has now the explicit interpretation that is mapping a two-dimensional Brillouin zone torus to the surface of a sphere. And so that's why when you reach a ferrum, you, when you have a ferromagnetic material, and if it's insulating, this formula tells you that the whole conductance always has to be quantized. Most of the time it is zero, of course, but for the rare cases uh, that it can have a, actually a uh, non-zero whole conductance equals to one, two, three, and so forth. Now, from this formula, you can already see what are the basic ingredients you need. So in order for this number to be non-zero, you need all three components of D. 
And what do they describe? The Z component describes the ferromagnetic ordering, and the XY component describes the spin orbit coupling. So that's why you need both ingredients for quantum anonymous form. So now there's also a three-dimensional version how you get to quantum anonymous, uh, anonymous Hall effect. Recall that on the surface of a 3D topological insulator, you have a gapless Dirac cone protected by time reversal symmetry. What if you break time reversal symmetry by introducing magnetic moments? Then it will open up an energy gap, and this has also been experimentally detected. So now what happens at the ferromagnetic domain wall boundary? So we predict at the, uh, in this paper, 208, that we predict that at the, now we're talking about the two-dimensional surface of the three-dimensional topological insulator. And then on the two-dimensional surface, you put the ferromagnetic moments, uh, which uh, is spin up or spin down. So therefore, at the domain wall boundary, the ferromagnetic moment is zero. And there lives a chiral edge state which has the basic essential ingredient as the edge state of a two-dimensional system, be it anonymous Hall effect or the uh, integer quantum Hall effect. So you can get actually this uh, two-dimensional, a uh, one-dimensional edge state on the surface of a, a three-dimensional topological insulator living on the boundary between the ferromagnetic domain. So there we predicted uh, another mechanism for quantum anonymous Hall is that you put uh, ferromagnetic moments on top or the bottom surface to gap out the uh, Dirac fermion, and the four side edges will look like a domain wall, and that will conduct the chiral edge state. So this, uh, in the thin limit, these two mechanisms are more or less equivalent. Now the question is, in which material can you find such a wonderful phenomena of quantum anonymous Hall effect? So we first predicted that in mercury manganese terrorite, when the manganese substitute uh, into the system, it's an isoelectronic substitution, and it can lead to, uh, if the manganese moments form a spontaneous moment, then originally, in the case of mercury terrorite, you have the quantum spin hole effect, you have spin up, going around clockwise, spin down, going around counterclockwise fashion. And uh, uh, by, in, uh, by tuning uh, the thickness of mercury terrorite layer, they can go to the trivial phase where these edge states disappear. Now, as long as you have time reversal symmetry, these two edge states have to appear and disappear at the same time. But what if you now have the manganese moment breaking the time reversal symmetry? then the edge state does not have to uh, disappear at the same time, and you can get into a situation where the red is still having the protected edge state where the blue channel is canceled out. And so this is like the blue channel going to an integer quantum hole transition from nu equals to one to zero, whereas the spin up still maintains that nu equals to one. So then you can, so we, we, uh, we therefore have a general idea that topological insulator, which already has uh, this edge state is a natural um, uh, cradle uh, for quantum anonymous Hall effect if you can introduce magnetic moments into the system which breaks time reversal symmetry through ferromagnetic order. Now, unfortunately, a, a manganese does not order spontaneously mercury terrorite. Even though Lawrence Mollenkamp's group has done some very uh, suggestive experiment, it's not 100% convincing where the, where the effect comes from. So then we went down theoretically, and my group at Stanford has proposed magnetic topological insulator materials uh, by 3D magnetic elements doped into bismuth terrorite. And that was a theoretical analytical calculation published in Nature Physics. And then I started working very actively with a group at the Institute of Physics in Beijing, China, who uh, they are experts in doing first principle calculations. And we indeed find that some of the 3D elements, especially chromium and iron, can form ferromagnetic moments with a reasonable Curie temperature with moment perpendicular to the plane, and that gave rise to this uh, three, uh, spontaneous magnetic order. So that's an improvement over mercury manganese terrorite, and that gave rise to this uh, prediction. So now, what is the mechanism for magnetic order? So there can be two kinds. One is this idea that on the surface you have magnetic moments, and the surfaces still have the rock electron. If you put Fermi level here, then there's no Fermi uh, wave vector, unlike uh, if you put Fermi level here. In the mo mo usual case, uh, metallic conduction, you have a KF. But if you put it at the Dirac point, then there's no Fermi wave vector to give rise to oscillation. And we actually computed that the magnetic coupling is always ferromagnetic, so there's no oscillation in sign. 
the oscillation only comes about when you put Fermi level higher. So that's, uh, that system has a natural tendency to form ferromagnetic order. <coughs> There's another mechanism which we described in our 2010 science paper is that when you have an ordinary insulator, it has usually a direct gap. But when you have <coughs> a bending version when these two parabolas uh, collide and intersect, and then they reopen the gap. And in this case, you see the gap is indirect and it lifts over quite extended region in momentum space. So that gives you a very large magnetic accessibility. And when you put ferromagnetic moments, this large magnetic accessibility can mediate ferromagnetic ordering. So after many years of hard work, the experimental group led by Qi Kun Shui, so I would like to show you the main player. So he is the group leader at Tsinghua University, uh, and there's also involved the Institute of uh, Physics. And these two young physicists, uh, Ya Yi Wang and He Ke, uh, were the two young <coughs> physicists uh, who have done the most of the uh, experimental work. And this is uh, Professor Fang Zong, with whom I collaborated on first principle calculation. And this is after the publication of uh, 20, uh, this year, uh, uh, the science paper in March, uh, where we made the announcement. So now, what is the uh, basic signature you would like to look for? So this is a ferromagnetic material. First of all, I believe, uh, and Dieter can, uh, uh, Professor Dito can correct me if I'm wrong, this is the first ferromagnetic material where you can do MB polar doping. You can go from N to P in a ferromagnetic material. And that's very, very rare. And we predict that as you go from N type to P type into bulk gap region, when the whole effect normally changes sign at high temperature, then we predict that the blue hole effect will be quantized to E squared over H, where the red uh, longitudinal resistance will go to zero. So these are exactly the traces you would see in the case of the integer quantum hole effect as a function of magnetic field. But now we fix the magnetic field. One version is we fix the magnetic field uh, where you change the chemical potential for uh, uh, doping going from N to P region. And in the middle, the ball gap region, uh, the conductance is going to zero, but the whole conductance is going to a plateau. So that's the key signature. And if you do a hysteresis loop, you will find that uh, uh, at magnetic field equals to zero, you will, have to, uh, you will find uh, plateau quantization for the whole effect. So this is the beautiful trace that was uh, uh, received, uh, w w which was obtained uh, in the experiment. This is chromium doped bismuth telluride, and that's still not good enough because uh, it still has some bulk carriers. And bismuth telluride tend to be electron doped, whereas antimony telluride tend to be hole doped. So they put bismuth antimony telluride first to have compensation doping as to reduce the bulk carrier, and then you put in chromium. So it's a very complicated material uh, science, but uh, be that as it may, uh, finally they achieved that you go, uh, you take these traces and you see that uh, at B equals to H external field equals to zero, you reach, uh, you reach a very good plateau quantization. At the same time, when you add a coercivity field, uh, when the magnetization is changing uh, direction, you see that there's a peak in the uh, longitudinal resistance, and in the middle region, uh, the resistance is close to zero. So remember, in the large hole angle regime, when the hole, is, uh, hole conductance is larger than the longitudinal uh, conductance, uh, the, the rho xx and sigma xx have a very similar uh, behavior. So this is a very similar uh, to the plateau transition in the quantum hole effect, uh, even though the external field is uh, very small. So this is now a trace as a function of gate voltage as you fix the external field at zero. So you see that uh, the, whole, the blue is the whole voltage, and you see it's pretty close quantized to one uh, e squared over h. And at the same time, there's a longitudinal resistance, which is still not go quite going to zero. So if you see some of the early data, I think the early data from Klaus's integer quantum Hall effect, the resistance, uh, longitudinal resistance is already close to zero, but the early data for fractional quantum Hall effect, for example, is still not quite to zero. And I will give uh, in the following uh, theoretical explanation why this is not quite going to zero. So first, I'd like to, uh, this is a preprint which also appeared just a few weeks ago, and the idea is whether you can reach a quantum anonymous Hall effect with higher plateaus. Of course, in the case of integer quantum Hall Hall effect was very easy. You just sweep the magnetic field and you sweep out a trace of different plateaus. But here, uh, things are not that simple. So recall the picture that if you have the white region bismuth telluride 
and you put magnetization, it opens up a gap. So this is basically the lowest plateau is basically reached by the surface states, uh, which are hybridizing the top and the bottom surface state, and the magnetization also opens up a, a ga gap, which is bigger than the hybridization gap, and that leads to the band inversion. So in order to reach a higher quantum hole, anonymous hole plateau, we consider, we propose to consider the quantum well states inside this two-dimensional uh, mercury terabyte because uh, we're in the limit where you have roughly five quintuple layers. So you can, uh, the language of quantum well states is quite accurate. So we actually predict that uh, when you have lower quantum well state and they are driven also by the magnetization and then can, they can give rise to a, a quantum anonymous whole plateau of n equals to one. So this is a study of the phase diagram theoretically uh, as a function of the thickness of bismuth terabyte and this is the exchange, con uh, exchange energy. And that you can tune by the uh, content of chromium content in the system. The more chromium, of course, the larger exchange interaction. And you can see that you can actually reach uh, higher plateaus. Now, here is a very, very important distinction between quantum anonymous Hall effect and quantum Hall effect. In quantum Hall effect, when you increase the magnetic field, you get a lower plateaus. Uh, in the whole uh, conductance. But here, when you increase the exchange field, which also increases the magnetization, you actually goes to higher conductance plateaus. So there's a sharp distinction between quantum anonymous Hall effect and quantum uh, Hall effect in how you reach the higher plateau. Here is by reaching higher exchange field in the case of quantum integer quantum Hall effect a la von Kretzing, uh, it will be going to lower magnetic fields. So that's a diagonal opposite behavior. So we have done not only analytical calculation of the phase diagram, but also uh, first principle calculations, my group uh, at Stanford. And we indeed find that when you uh, have this particular, we optimized uh, many extensive calculation, we have optimized the material design by this composition. And we actually find if you take 12 quintuple layers and with the exchange interaction of uh, uh, 0.14, which is reachable, uh, you can actually get two chiral edge states rather than one. And that is the preprint. So now uh, I'd like to give you an explanation why in this quantum anonymous Hall effect, uh, the longitudinal uh, conductance is not, uh, resistance is not reaching zero yet. So recall this picture of uh, quantum anonymous Hall effect from the 3D picture that the top and the bottom surface are already gapped out. And there are still these four side surfaces and we predicted that uh, with the appropriate magnetization, you can have one chiral edge state. But actually this material without any magnetization is already a topological insulator which has a helical edge state. Uh, with counter-propagating edge state. So what actually happens is that this is too simple a picture, that the in, in co uh, coexistence with this single chiral edge state, there's still some other helical edge state in the system. So it's not it just that it has one edge state, it has uh, perhaps five right mover and four left movers. So in this particular picture, that you have one chiral edge state and you have these three, so altogether you have six plus one, uh, seven right goers and uh, six left goers uh, in the system. So this helical edge state will still give you some dissipative contribution, and this is our fundamental explanation that uh, the coexistence between the chiral and helical state can give rise to some additional uh, channels uh, which, uh, which can uh, give you that rho x axis is still not equal to zero. Two minutes, yeah. Okay, so then uh, actually uh, we can uh, propose a further experiment uh, which, uh, which are non-local experiment which can verify this picture. We can actually propose how do you make the plateaus more quantized? Actually we propose to make the edge rougher to make the edge, uh, helical uh, edge state poorly propagating and that because the chiral edge state always has to propagate and that's how you reach row access going to zero limit. So now let me use the remaining two minutes to explain that now we have a wonderful platform. We have gone from 2D topological insulator with quantum spin hole effect. You break a symmetry. Here it's protected by time reversal symmetry. You break a symmetry uh, by introducing uh, time reversal, by breaking time reversal symmetry, by introducing magnetic moments. You go from quantum spin hole effect to quantum anonymous hole effect uh, with only one chiral edge state. 
So what more can you do when you only have one chiral edge state? What you can break is another symmetry, and that is the particle number conservation symmetry. And that you break by bringing the system in proximity with a superconductor. So we predict that if you have quantum anonymous Hall effect, that's another uh, highlight session in this uh, to the uh, EP2DS conference on the Majorana, and this is all unique proposal, that if you start from quantum anonymous Hall, and if you put that in proximity effect to the superconductor, uh, because the edge state of quantum anonymous Hall is a single chiral edge state, which can be as two chiral Majorana edge state. And when you break the symmetry, uh, they always have to be degenerate as long as you have particle number conservation. But if you break that symmetry by uh, bringing a proximity effect with superconductor, you can again destroy one channel of them, and you're left with a single chiral Majorana channel. And in the vortex core, they will live a Majorana zero mode. So this is a proposal, again, uh, a theoretical proposal, and we will see if we will have luck again to see that this will be experimentally uh, confirmed. So now let me just finish. Uh, oh, so this uh, chiral edge state uh, of uh, quantum anonymous Hall could be very useful because it like, exactly leads to this highway conduction mechanism because the autobahn or the highway exactly has this behavior that uh, the uh, uh, opposite moving traffic are spatially separated. And this proposal has now been adopted by the International Technology Roadmap for Semiconductors. Of course, the quantum Hall effect is exactly that, but you don't want to build a semiconductor device at 10 Tesla field. So now that you get rid of the external magnetic field, you can really uh, try to uh, think that the future of the technology may really be changed as we have dissipationless electronics in this system. So that is my conclusion, and I thank you for your attention. Thank you, thank you very much for a very fantastic talk. Question or comments? A beautiful presentation. Thank, thank you very you. much. Uh, could you, for inumarsenite gallium antimony, yes. this material system has been used to look for excitonic insulators. Yeah. Can you maybe comment on yeah, the Yeah, this is, uh, this is a very, yeah. Yeah, this is, I think, uh, yeah, uh, I actually, I have thought about this, but not deeply enough to tell you intelligent answers. But I think these two phenomena are now appear to be quite related because you exactly need this spanning version phenomena, uh, kind of the, the intersection of the parabola. Uh, very, very good question. I promise I will think about it. Could you please come back a, a few slides back? Uh, so did I notice right uh, uh, that uh, uh, which slide? Ro, ro, ro X, uh, y, ah. uh, to experimental data? Uh, ah, the, the, the theory X, of the experiment. Uh, experiments. Ah, yeah, the uh, so experiment. did I not right uh, that uh, yeah, this uh, the values? No, yeah. No so so this is uh, about uh, uh, this is uh, about uh, one uh, kilo ohm, and the rho X. Y is about uh, is ex almost uh, close to 26 kilo. 26 and uh, uh, rho x y 26, uh, rho x x uh, less than one kilo. But uh, uh, two or three slides uh, back, uh, you did show that it is. Uh, 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 there was a picture with uh, rho x uh, y yeah, uh, about two or three. This one, yes, in kilo yeah. ohms, it is uh, this one, the, right? Yeah. Two, not, tw uh, yeah, not 20, uh, so. Yeah, it should be tenths of, uh, yeah, yeah, uh, maybe. 10 times yeah. larger. Yeah, so there's a zero. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, no, thank you. And uh, maybe. Yeah, it may so be just a misprint. Another small question. Yeah. Uh, uh, so uh, is uh, in this uh, quantum anomalous uh, whole effect, uh, so uh, is there the same resti restriction uh, on uh, uh, whole bar uh, width uh, as... No, uh, uh, very excellent, excellent uh, question. Yeah, yeah. A, a few yeah. micro uh, This is a fantastic question, yeah. So quantum anonymous Hall effect is more robust uh, than quantum spin Hall effect because quantum spin Hall effect is robust against elastic backscattering but not against inelastic backscattering. Quantum anonymous Hall effect is, should ideally be absolutely uh, robust if we kill some of the... Courage. So these uh, data are obtained for samples which are much bigger in size compared to the observation of micron-sized quantum spin core. Yes, I have a question. The, yes. in the, last, uh, the second last 
Right. Uh, Second you, last I think you mentioned some application. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Could you yeah, same yeah. Few so the idea <laughs> uh, is to, well, uh, it, it is, I, I, I think it would be too ambitious to immediately replace all transistors by uh, topological insulator. So the idea is to have a phased approach and to try to solve a problem which is uh, desperately a solution is looked for and to still don't immediately change everything. So we came to the idea that the semiconductor industry right now, they have a dissipation coming from transistors, but actually a lot more dissipation come from interconnects. So the proposal is to change the interconnects uh, from regular copper wire to these uh, chiral edge states uh, of magnetic topological insulators. So these chiral edge states have exactly this autobahn-like uh, uh, property that they cannot backscatter. And this is uh, semiconductor and copper because they're all in diffusive uh, uh, regime. And that's, uh, so right now there are a lot of talk about uh, using opto, uh, uh, photonics interconnect inside the chip, which I think is just too uh, unrealistic. So we are proposing to use this as an interconnect, and at least the standard body thinks that uh, it's not too far-fetched. And so there's an uh, in intensive DAPA program for us to, to reach that. So this field is really exciting, not only for some very, very fundamental science, who would have thought these esoteric topological numbers uh, can eventually maybe so useful for real applications. Any other question? Uh, the quantum anonymous core effect, yeah. Yeah, you go, go, need to go to a uh, very low temperature still. Uh, well, you already see very good uh, signs that they are already close to 26, but to get to very accurate quantization, you still need to go to a relatively low temperature. I think uh, the bulk carrier is one problem that even though these materials theoretically are insulated, they still <laughs> have uh, bulk carriers. At low enough temperature, you have carrier freeze out. I think that's the main effect. Any other question? If not the case, oh. <laughs> uh, Jen Andrew has a question. Jen Andrew has, uh, yeah. Can you, uh, can you uh, say something about where interactions would be most? Yeah, uh, very, very good question. So, uh, so, so when we look at this picture, so there's a uh, now a lot of uh, theoretical uh, ideas that if you make, uh, so there's a, uh, this is not like Landau level. Landau level is strictly flat, and Jan Andrew is completely right. Uh, quantum, integer quantum coffee, fractional quantum coffee with flat Landau levels is really ideal place where interaction plays the maximal role. So these are very highly dispersing bands, those that are observed currently in experiment. But theorists have talked about you can in principle construct models where the bands are reasonably flat, just the band structure is reasonably flat. And there are materials like honey, uh, kagumi lattice and so on. And then you expect that you fractionally feel a regular band and then you can get into fractional uh, quantum anonymous hole effect. So, but when I look at these uh, proposals, they, uh, theoretically, it's uh, in principle, uh, existence proof is okay, but uh, very, still very hard to see how that can be realized. I think we need another, some kind of a brilliant material idea to see how that uh, can come about. Yeah. Okay. So uh, fractional mm -hmm. topological insulator is the place where uh, interaction effects can really manifest themselves. Okay, so time, time is running up, and uh, let us thank the speaker again. <laughs>